Let's see how that looks. Well, close enough. All right, let me just, I'm gonna try be doing the screencast at the same time, so let's just see how that works. Okay. That question? Question? That question? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, my server's name is Marge. Uh, you know, my old desktop was, was uh, Lisa, and so this one's crusty. My Windows XP VM is named Selma. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have the same feeling towards XP as Homer does for Selma, so yeah, okay. There, there's a theme going on there, okay. All right, what I wanted to do is just uh, show you a little bit about working with images. And this is a little demo program I wrote that uses the Dabo D image control. Okay, I have it set up so that the image itself is a yellow background, just so you can see the full extent of the image. And if I do load, let's go to PyCon 07. There we go. All right, now, just with that load, I've, I've created the uh, image control, I've loaded the image onto it. And you can see it kept it proportional. I can change that simply to stretch it to fill up the size of this. I can resize. Get as crazy as you want. You can also do clip, which will just show it at its normal size no matter what you do. And you can see that the rest of the image control is still expanding to fill up the space. That's that yellow background. But the, uh, the bitmap itself of the image is constrained. So if I go like that, now you can see there's extra space on the bottom. I make this up here. Now the extra space is on the side. If I resize the form, the image resizes along with it. I can rotate it and it maintains proportion. Okay, so if you've worked with the WX image control, you know that there's a lot of coding going on in here. So let me get out of here and just uh, show you that. Okay, so basically this just sets up the Dabo environment. Create a form, and here's the caption property at work. Just set that for the form. Create an image panel and those sliders here. Now, one of the standards we have is you can pass any property in the constructor, uh, and it will automatically set it. So I can set the orientation for the sliders, the min, max, value. I can also pass events that I want to bind. So in this case, I have on hit, and on the convention we have is if you have capital O-N followed by the name of an event that that particular control binds to, it'll automatically do the binding for you. So you can just pass all this stuff in right here. And it's gonna bind to an on slider method. And so is this one. Okay, we're gonna create some other spacer stuff in here. Uh, here's our image control, and that's where we set the back color equal to yellow. Okay, it's simple. You don't have to uh, do RGB pairs if you don't want to. It uses the standard HTML naming for colors. You can just pass that in. Here are the buttons for the rotating. It just, we're just setting a picture property for a, a bitmap button. You don't need to load the image or anything like that. You just set a picture property to a standard uh, path or to your own local path. Now here's that one drop-down that we had that set the uh, scaling. We pass in the choices that we want for it as just one property. You can specify the value either the position of the item in the list, the string value will be the actual string text that's displayed in the list, and you can also associate a set of keys for each of the items in there so you can have a key value. That's real important when you're doing like lookup tables where you want to have the state or you know, the division or something like that, but you have a uh, primary key associated with that for related data. So you can display something user-friendly but actually bind to you know, the nitty-gritty stuff that you want. In this case, we just want the string, so we set the value mode to string. Now this is the part that's kind of interesting. Uh, we set up data binding mainly because our original goal was to be able to enable uh, 
be able to bind controls to databases, you know, to be able to change a text box in, in some place and have it update that change back to your database. So we have the concept of a data source, um, which would normally be uh, a business object, and the business object would then talk to the cursor object, which talks to the database. But we figured, why stop there? So our data source is that image control. All right, so what this is doing is it's binding the value of this drop-down list to that image control that we just created. And the data field is its scale mode property. So there's no code. When you change that list, you saw the image change its proportions. But there's no code that I have to write to do that. I just bind the scale mode property to this drop-down list and when I change that list it, the data binding kicks in and it automatically updates the image. All right, So that's right there, I mean to me, I use this all the time in, in the UI is that you want one, change in one UI element to update another UI element. You don't want to keep writing code all the time so you just bind to a property and it works. All right, here's a button that loads the image and we just pass it a method, an event handler for that, and then that's about all the other interesting stuff. Here's how we rotate. We tell the image to rotate clockwise or we tell it to rotate counterclockwise. That's it. That's all the code you have to write to get an image control to rotate itself. When you change either of those sliders, what we do is we grab which slider it is by getting the EVT is the uh, object that gets passed, the event object, and it has a property called event object, which is the object that raised the event. So we grab its uh, value and just uh, put it into percentage, and we figure out whether it's the horizontal or the vertical slider and change the width or the height of the image control appropriately. Right? So we just set the width or the height but we don't do anything else, but the image control knows enough to resize the, the displayed image accordingly. So again, you're not writing code here, you're just setting a property. And it automatically knows to do you know, the correct resizing. Okay, when I click that button to load the image, we have a get file function that can take a string of however many extensions you want, and they're just simple, JPEG, GIF, whatever you want. Up here, I just in the comment, I hope, I guess that's kind of visible. That's the actual string you would have to pass to do the same thing in WX Python. And if you have an extra space between these vertical bars, it doesn't work. And if you don't capitalize, it, you get burned a lot of times with this kind of stuff. So it's just easier to say, give me JPEGs, PNGs, whatever you want, and get that. If they cancel out, F will be none. So if they didn't cancel, this is all you need to do to change the picture is just set the picture property of that control to that, and it's a file path. Set it to the file path, it'll do the rest. So that's pretty simple. On resize, when the form resizes, we just set this flag to true, and we have an idle event. Now we didn't do explicit binding to these particular events on the form, but if another convention we have, if, if you have an on and then the name of the event, it will automatically bind. If you don't like that behavior, there's just one property you change and you turn it all off, but most of the time it comes in handy. So on the, and anytime there's an idle event raised, if we need to update, we reset the flag, grab the current values of the width and height of the panel and the sliders, and just set the image size in one shot. And again, it will update the the displayed image. And then to run the app, all we do is we create a dApp instance, set its main form class to this form class we defined up here, and say start. And that's all we need to do.